Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1450. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the start file or finish file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here for Excel 2016. We want to see how to use relationships so we can replace having to use VLOOKUP when we make pivot tables. Now let's go over to the finished file. And here's our goal. We want to do a cross tabulated pivot table, region and product with years also in the row area. We want a slicer with month. And we want to be able to drag and drop fields from three different tables. Now, if we go over to our start file, what we'd normally do when we have a sales table like this, with product ID and sales rep ID is we'd add extra columns. For example, here we'd add VLOOKUP, have VLOOKUP look up the product ID in this lookup table and then return the product name. We do the same thing for sales rep, looking it up over here, returning either the sales rep or the region in our case. That means we'd have two extra columns. Now, it's perfectly all right on a small data set to use VLOOKUP like this. But if you have Excel 2016, we don't have to do that. We can use relationships. Now, in order to use Data Ribbon Tab Relationship button to create a relationship between all three tables and allow us to have three tables in the pivot table field list, each one of our tables has to be converted to an Excel table. Now, I've converted these two. Let's convert this one. Click in one single cell. I have field names at top, records in rows, empty cells all the way around. I go up to Insert and click on Table. Now, if you do this a lot, and boy, do Excel tables have a lot of great uses, use the keyboard Control-T. There's our Create Table dialog box. Definitely, we have headers. Click OK or simply hit Enter. So it's really Control-T, Enter. Every time you create a table, you also want to give it up in Table Tools Design Properties a good name. And I do this so often. I do Control-T, Enter, and then I immediately do Alt-JTA. And that jumps me up to the Properties Table Name text box to give it a name. F Sales and Enter. I think I want to change this right click. And on the Mini Toolbar, I'm going to use Font Color White. Once we have our three tables, now we can build a relationship. Now think about what we do with VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP would have to look up product ID and then jump over and find a match here. So it's as if there is a relationship between these two columns. Without using VLOOKUP, if we have a relationship, when I drag quad to the row area of a pivot table, it will know to summarize the sales for that particular product. So to create a relationship, we go up to Data, click the Relationship button. Now we're going to click New. We're going to select our first table. Notice it says Table, Column, Foreign Key, and then Related Table, Related Column, Primary. Now there's two ways to kind of figure out how to relate this to what VLOOKUP is. If you just remember that the related table is the lookup table, then you just come here, and in our case, D product would be the lookup table. The other way is if you know databasing, a primary key is a unique list of items in a particular column that forces us to have no duplicates. And when we're doing exact match like we would do with VLOOKUP, we need a unique list here. So when I see primary, I know, oh yeah, that's the primary key. That's the first column of the lookup table. So I'm going to select product ID. That means that the table will be our sales table. This is going to be our sales table on the top. And we got to tell it, hey, use product ID. Now there will be a relationship between these two columns. Click OK. Now we click New, select our sales table. Now we're going to select sales rep ID. It's going to be D sales rep. And then we'll use sales rep ID. Click OK. Now we have our two relationships. Now what really happened? When I create relationships, 
all of these tables are being stored in a behind-the-scenes columnar database, also called the data model. Now, normally, you have to have a special add-in or a special feature called Power Pivot. But any version of Excel 2016 will allow you to create these relationships, and the data will automatically be stored in the data model. And it doesn't matter which cell we start from, as long as it's not inside one of these tables. And now I can go up and create Insert, Pivot Table, or we can use the keyboard Alt-N-V. And notice, by default, because we have tables in the data model, it assumes we want to use the data model. If you started your cursor inside the table, it would think you want that table. You'd have to just redirect it by saying, use this workbook's data model. I'm going to put it on a new sheet. Click OK or simply hit Enter. And this is absolutely amazing. One, two, three different tables. I can drag and drop, for example, from product down to rows, actually, product down to the row area. I'm going to resize this a bit. And instantly, I get my unique list of products. Now I can drag from sales rep region down to columns. Instantly, I get a unique list of regions. Now I go down to the sales table and drag sales down to values. I want to make sure and add number formatting. Right click one cell in the values area and point not to format cells, but to number formatting. And we want to add some number formatting. I'm going to add currency. Two decimals is fine. Click OK. I'm immediately going to come down here and double click this and call this PT or something like that. Now, when we build standard pivot tables that are not from the data model, you can drag and drop a date down to the row area and group the individual days up to years and months. Now, normally, if you're using the data model, the full version, you don't want to drag and drop to use the grouping feature. You want to build a date table and have a relationship. But our data is about 50,000 rows. That is not big data at all. So we can use the automatic grouping feature, even though we're using the data model. Now watch this. When I drag date down here, it's actually going to internally in the columnar database build a bunch of helper columns, or what is called calculated columns, one for year, one for month, one for quarter. So I'm going to drag and drop date down below products. It takes a while because it's building these extra columns. And there we go, year, quarter, month. I'm going to come up and uncheck quarter and month. All I want is year and date, for that matter. I don't want the individual dates. Now I'm going to drag year up above product. That is looking amazing. So for 2014, there's our products. There's our region. Down here, 2015. Just for kicks, let's come up to Design. And you can pick some style. I'm going to pick Light Blue Pivot Style Medium 6. Now again, we used the grouping feature. If you had millions of rows of data in the data model, even with millions of rows, the, date, the grouping feature works. But once you get into advanced data modeling, you don't want to use the grouping feature. But for us, it's perfectly all right. And boy, is it fast and convenient. Now the last thing, we want to come up to Pivot Table Tools, Analyze, over to the Filter group, Insert Slicer. And I want to show Months, Date Month, check, click OK. Maybe in Slicer Tools, Options, I'll say Two Columns. Maybe over here, I'll select a particular style. And there I have January 2015 product region cross tabulated table. Here is October. I can clear the filter, and I'm back to just the yearly totals. So that's pretty convenient if we have multiple tables and we'd like to drag and drop fields from our pivot table field list to build our pivot tables. We can use data relationships instead of VLOOKUP. Now, the last note, of course, is this 
does not replace VLOOKUP. And in this case, with 50,000 rows, you can do it either way you want. But it's nice to know that there's this option for creating relationships between tables. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up comment and subscribe. We'll see you next video.